Welcome to Community Church, and thanks so much for tuning in online. We hope that you enjoy today's message and are encouraged through your time here today. No matter who you are or what's going on in your life, know that we are so glad you're here. Well, good afternoon again, everybody. It's great to have you in the house. I love the way that video ends. What will you do with what you've been given? What an incredible question, and uh, what we've really been looking at over the last couple of weeks and the reality of, of being given Holy Spirit. He is God with us, the ultimate game changer, and I'm so excited to continue that series today, but before we get into that, I mean, we have something to celebrate this weekend. Last weekend, our three campuses in Hampton Roads, that would be our Suffolk campus, Kempsville campus, and then Western Branch, uh, we saw, get ready to celebrate, 82 people get water baptized last <laughs> Last weekend, we are absolutely pumped about that. 82 people declaring they want everybody to know they are trusting Jesus. 82 people who said, my past has lost its power over my life, and I believe what God's word says, I'm a new person because my faith is in him. And so we're celebrating still with those individuals and families as they made that commitment and took that step. It's been really cool to see how God is at work this summer. You know, I said, um, if you've, been, if you've been around, I said leading into the summer that, that I thought it's important for us not to just take the summer off, uh, but that we should grow this summer. And I want to tell you, uh, church, it's been fun to watch so many of you take that seriously as you've been growing in your relationship with Jesus, many of you stepping up to serve, uh, people asking about leading groups in the fall because you truly are uh, growing. And so way to go. Keep going. Uh, we're not even like halfway through summer, so come on, how much more good stuff has God got uh, for us? And uh, Today, uh, I want to, I before I jump into today's message, I do want to catch you up in case you missed a couple weeks, because this series, or these first three weeks, uh, they do kind of build. Week number one, we introduced Holy Spirit as the ultimate game changer for our life. He is God. He is God with us because of him. It is never me. It's always we. When you give your life, become a follower of Jesus Christ, the Bible says Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you. And we talked in week one about how sometimes that can be hard to understand, and so we looked at the original uh, languages of the Bible that give us the word Holy Spirit or Spirit and discover that they're the words that mean wind or breath. And so you can't see Holy Spirit, but just like the wind, you can see the impact of Holy Spirit. Then last weekend, we talked about Holy Spirit as our best friend and how it's important we see him as a person because in order to develop a relationship with him, we have to see him as a person. And if we don't see him as a person, we won't develop a relationship with him. And if we don't develop a relationship with him, we won't experience all he has for us. This weekend, I want to talk about the gifts God gives us. I want to talk about what many people call the gifts of the Spirit. But before I jump into that, uh, what we should all know about God here as followers of Jesus Christ is he is a God who is a gift-giving God. From Genesis to Revelation, we find him as a God who loves to give good gifts. In fact, uh, the best gift, Romans chapter 6, verse 23, it says this, The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Every one of us here today, we deserve, based on the fact that if you're here today and you're like me, and you get up uh, every day and you get things wrong some of the time every single day, God would say that based on that, we deserve death, but he gives us the free gift of life now and forever by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. It's the greatest gift any single one of us could ever experience, could ever have. And what I want to show us today is when he promises in John 10 that we could have the abundant life, the life he gave us, the purpose of the gifts we're going to talk about today are that we would experience that life, that they would help us live it out day by day. But in order to, to do that, I, I need to kind of draw a, a distinction between two words today. And because I think these are two words that we, we struggle, maybe is the right word, I don't know. Sometimes I can't find the right adjective. We struggle to find... Uh, the, the true meaning, I guess, of these two words, and that is the word fake and the word real. Now, I say that to you today because there's a reality that there's a whole lot of fakeness today. We pretend. There's a lot of people pretending today. I mean, there are like you know, games from social media to different games you play on, on anywhere where you just set up whole pretend lives. 
a whole life that is just completely pretend. Not only that, it's like that's what you then talk about. (laughs) Because it's like we have this desire to, to escape real and then we live in pretend or fake. I hear it. I hear it as a, as a pastor in, in, in things that, that go on in people's lives. I hear, it, I hear it as a parent in how my kids love to talk about a game or what's happening. I hear it uh, when I'm eavesdropping on the person sitting in front of me at a ball game and what's going on in their life. I, <laughs> yes, I get a lot of my message material from conversations and things I overhear. So if you ever wondered, oh, I wonder if Pastor Michael's listening right now, the answer is yes. And I, <laughs> listen, I, I, I'm not judging. I don't feel bad about it because I'm not judging. I'm using it to help others every time. <laughs> every time. But, but, but to be honest, like, it's heartbreaking to me when I realize so many of us, we, we either so despise or we don't find joy in what we would call real that we're going after fake. What I want to tell you today, what I want to make sure we know today, is that when it comes to the gifts of the Spirit, when it comes to Holy Spirit, when it comes to how He works in and through us and the gifts He gives us, we are talking about real, not fake. What is real? It's actually existing, not imagined. It's actual. It's existing. It's not imagined. I'm not up here today to tell you something I dreamed up. I'm not up here today to tell you I've got this this imagination, because the truth is I could tell you stuff in my imagination and some of it you would go, that sounds awesome, and some of it would go, you're really weird, right? That's, I'm not up here to do either of those. I'm up here today to, I hope, with God's help, the way we've been talking about his spirit being with us, that he would help us today understand this real life he has for us. Would you pray with me right now? Lord, I, I thank you that, that you do not waste moments And I pray that this moment, that the minutes we have left in this service right now, God, I ask you, you would take every single word that comes out of my mouth, let it be guided by you. Lord, I pray it be exactly what each of us needs to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. Those of you that still aren't paying attention to me because you're only looking at what's to my right, I'll get to that in just a couple of moments. You can go back then and watch the rest of the message uh, after. We're going to talk about gifts from two different perspectives today. I want to break down two passages of Scripture, Romans chapter 12 and 1 Corinthians chapter 12. If you like to follow along in your Bible, you could go to those two places, Romans and 1, Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12. You can also just follow along on the screen. Romans chapter 12, I'm going to read it first. It says this, God's marvelous grace imparts to each one of us varying gifts and ministries that are uniquely ours. It says God's grace gives us these gifts, these, these things, if you will, that are ours. What are they? He says, so if God has given you the grace gift of prophecy, activate your gift by using the proportion of the faith you have to prophesy. If your grace gift is serving, thrive in serving others well. If you have the grace gift of teaching, then be actively teaching and training others. If you have the grace gift of encouragement, use it to often encourage others. If you have the grace gift of giving to meet the needs of others, then may you prosper in your generosity without any fanfare. If you have the gift of leadership, be passionate about your leadership. If you have the gift of showing compassion, then flourish in your cheerful display of compassion. These are what are called grace gifts we find in Romans chapter 12. They are grace, meaning they are given, not earned. None of us can show up today and go, now I'm going to pay this amount of money because I want those gifts that are listed in Romans chapter 12. They're grace, they're given. Some people have one, some people have more than one. It's, it's, it's all up to God, he's the grace giver, we don't necessarily know. Now listen, they're gifts that are given, meaning some of us have those gifts. All of us should do those things to some level. What do I mean? Well, one of the examples is the gift of serving. All of us are called to serve, to serve others, to serve in God's church, to serve in our community, to, to some, like we should serve, it's what we're called to do. The gift of serving is when it's like you have to serve. 
You find all of your, like, it is the most life-giving thing you can do to serve. You, this is you or you know somebody like this. It's like if you go to a friend's house, you walk in the door, and you're like, you just start cleaning their house. You just start putting things away. You're like, here, can I unload your dishwasher? You're, here, I went and got your mail. I just swept off your sidewalk. You're like, you're serving on 13 different serve teams at church. You want keys to the church so you can be here when nobody else is, so you can just serve. You just, like, love to serve. So this is, you have the gift of serving. Talks about the gift of compassion. That's like when, when somebody gets a, you know, it's like literally a hangnail, and you're like, I am just so sorry. I want you to know I hurt with you right now. And, <laughs> and I say this jokingly, but I'm like, you really feel it. You're like, I'm so bummed that you have that right now. And some of you, you might be wired like me. You're like, get up. Why are you crying? Well, sew your leg back on. Get over it. <laughs> it's like, listen, that's not okay if I act like that. Like, I don't walk in the grace gift of compassion, but I still have to have compassion. So I married a person who has the grace gift of compassion. <laughs> Megan actually really helps balance me out in this category. <laughs> these are uniquely ours, meaning God gives these gifts, they're ours. It's, I, I want to be careful how I say this. I'm going to use the word own, but don't think about it. Uh, have, maybe is a better word. Like, I have possession of these gifts. Romans chapter 12. Now, I want to compare that to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Here's what it says, beginning in verse 7. Each believer is given continuous revelation by the Holy Spirit to benefit not just himself, but all. Continuous revelation, meaning that there's this continuous flow of gifting from Holy Spirit through a follower of Jesus Christ. What does this gifting look like? Verse 8, to one is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. Now, I want to help today, I pray, and we're going to break this down, but I first want to explain to you kind of differences in gifts and how it works for the follower of Jesus Christ. And I believe this is in so incredibly important today uh, that we get this. First, let's talk about the 1 Corinthians chapter 12 gifts. These gifts come through us as if we are Colanders. If you've never seen a colander before, you maybe have never done anything in the kitchen before. This is a colander. If we could just imagine this for a moment, God calls us who are followers of Jesus Christ to seek spiritual gifts that we could simply allow them to flow through us to help others. Wisdom, knowledge, healing, miracles. We don't own them. We don't maintain possession of them. They simply flow through us. Notice, once they're done flowing through us, we don't still walk around with the gift of healing in our hand. If that was the case, if it was the case that you just walked around with the gift of healing, for instance, we would be like, well, you should just walk through all the hospitals and just be healed, 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 healed. And everybody would be, but that's not how it works. We seek him, he pours the gift, we never own it, it's just in a moment we are used like this for it. Romans chapter 12 is different. Romans chapter 12, he says those gifts are yours, meaning we maintain them and we also are constantly pouring them out. That's where we're more like the sponge we used in week number one, where he pours the gifts and then we've let them flow through us. So it is this constant flow, but the water can stop for a moment and we still have some to flow through us. Now we have to make sure we're connected to the source so we keep having the gift flowing through us. Otherwise, we just get dried up, become an old, smelly, nasty sponge. Nobody today wants to become an old, nasty, smelly sponge. Here's what I wanna tell you. I believe with everything inside of me, I look at what goes on in our nation. I want to talk specifically about our nation for a moment. I want to make a political statement. The problem in our country has absolutely nothing to do with politics. It has absolutely nothing to do with people on the left or people on the right. People on the far left, people on the far right, people in this, whatever. Our nation will change, and it will change for the better if followers of Jesus Christ, if we will literally every day get up in the morning and say, God, 
I am seeking you right now, and I want to live my life on the earth today simply as one who could be a funnel for you to just let the power of your spirit flow through me to help build others up, to be one that encourages, to be one that you work miracles through, to be one that has gifts, words of life that come through me. And we begin to just daily walk that way. I'm telling you, our nation changes. That's the change we need. But do you know, do you know what, what's... Well, even for me, I'll be honest, like it's risky for me to talk this whole message this weekend because if you grew up in church, people have opinions about some of what I'm gonna talk about. And in fact, what, what I've noticed happen a lot is in the, the church, capital C church, just meaning collectively several churches, um, people just, well, they just completely start shying away from the supernatural reality of the Holy Spirit in order to just do things that can make sense in our minds. And so what ends up happening is, we're just trying to live our life natural force against natural force on the earth and we're always feeling overwhelmed and empty. The Holy Spirit's the game changer. Following Jesus is different than any other way to live your life if you choose to tap into the game changer. So it's like we, we discover our Romans 12 gifts. <laughs> Discover that. That's why we do the Discover Track. If you've not done the Discover Track, jump in. Week number three. It's about discovering yourself. You'll learn. Maybe, maybe the reason you find more joy in doing this is because it's a gift God has given you. And when you're able to function then in your gift, you experience more of the life he has for you. You discover your Romans 12 gift. You seek and expect to experience your 1 Corinthians 12 gift. Here's how to, here's how to kind of, I'm going to walk through these just real quick. Not all of them, but a couple of them. He talks first in 1 Corinthians 12 about wisdom. Meaning God will supernaturally give wisdom through you in a moment. Here's how you know if God has ever done this through your life before. You've been in a conversation with somebody. They were asking you a question. Something maybe was going along. And you like, you, you told them like the best advice that they could have ever even imagined. And here's how you know it was so good. As soon as it came out of your mouth, you were like, dang, I'm smart. <laughs> like you even yourself, you couldn't really believe that, that you knew that. And it's because you did it. It's because the Holy Spirit just dropped it through you in a moment. And then here's how else to even know it, is there's a chance 30 minutes later, they go, hey man, thanks for, for what you said. And you're like, what'd I say? <laughs> Seriously, that's the, that's, that's the supernatural gift, spiritual gift of wisdom coming through you. It talks about the gift of knowledge. Gift of knowledge is knowing something that you couldn't have known unless the Holy Spirit actually told you. Now, this concept, this gift, it's important to, I, I want to I teach this one in a moment, but it's true for all the gifts. It's always about good, uh, never about simply knowing. John chapter 4, we find Jesus having this conversation with a woman. And he's, he's, he, he wants to help her. Like that's all Jesus ever wanted to do and wants to, when he was on the earth, his desire today is that we would, uh, by the Spirit, come to him, know that he is the way, the truth, and the life, that he has life for us that is good. He's having this conversation with this woman and they're kind of conversing back and forth and he says something to her about her husband and this is how she responds to him. The woman answered him, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, you're right in saying I have no husband for you've had five husbands and the one you now have is not your husband. What you have said is true. Now, I mean, just think about it for a moment. I don't know that this woman was like super pumped in that instance for this dude who she doesn't know is Jesus to just say this to her in this moment like this. Now, here's why I use this as an example. Number one, we see Jesus functioning in the gifts of the Spirit. Interesting to note from study, from what I've read from several other scholars, um, we only see Jesus function in the gifts of the Spirit in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, after he was water baptized and the Holy Spirit came upon him. So we see him functioning in the gift of knowledge right here where he knows this about this woman. But guess what Jesus doesn't do? Jesus doesn't know this about this woman and then get out his iPhone and start texting, hey dude, you're not gonna believe this. She has had five husbands and the dude she's with now, not her husband. Wait, wait, wait. Pray for her. <laughs> I'm sorry if that hurt you. That was all in love. Like if you just felt that on your toes, that was all in love. 
Do you know how sometimes we feel like in church we can just say whatever we want and then just go pray for them? Do you know everything you said before that was still gossip and still wrong? Adding pray for them at the end doesn't make God pleased with it. And I say that to you just because I want you to experience what God has for you. I'm sorry I didn't say this in any other services. Somebody just needed that right now. What's he do? He has a conversation with this woman where he has knowledge about her and he speaks life to her as a result and builds her up because every gift of the Spirit is always to build up and encourage others. It's never so that we can be like, I, I got knowledge. Look at me, bro. For healing. I mentioned this just a moment ago, but he says healing. Now, when it comes to the concept of healing, As with anything to do with God, there will always be aspects we do not understand. Why? Because we are human and he is God. I wish there was an easier or more palatable way for us to swallow that. It's just the truth. Here's what I can tell you about the gift of healing. It's a spiritual gift just like the others mentioned. Nobody owns it except Holy Spirit. We can pray for people. We can see them be healed. As simply put as going, be healed in Jesus' name and people will get healed. Uh, we have stories in our church of this happening. I, I, I reference mine whenever I touch this. The 10 or 12 years ago, I had, was healed from um, some back stuff where I doctor said I had all these issues. It's the way it was going to be. It, it was in a moment, through prayer, through something that happened, healing. But here's what I know the reality is for every single one of us. We've prayed for people and they haven't been healed. Here's what I know is the reality for every single one of us is we've, we've gone, okay, that's great, but how come that? And what I can say to you is we're a colander. Seek God. Let him flow through us. Do you know the apostle Paul who actually wrote 1 Corinthians, what we're studying right now, who literally, when he would just walk places at times, people would be healed. This is how God would use him. This same dude who was, who was, uh, teaching this guy named Timothy, this young guy, couldn't heal him. Like, he was the guy he was closest with, and yet, he's like, be healed, and he won't be healed. The same guy, Paul, he, the Bible says he had a thorn in his flesh. He asked God to heal him, wouldn't get healed. Why? I don't know. Here's what I know. I'd rather be in the game and at least have an average than sitting on the bench and never being a part. Let's, let's just keep praying. Let's just keep let's just seeking. Come on. Here I am, Lord. I, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm going to keep seeking. And the second part of this passage is another part that is just often avoided in, in church. And, and I, I'll admit this, you know, I, I debated at what level I would talk about this last part this weekend. Some of you are brand new to church. And uh, it's going to be a totally new concept. Some of you grew up in church and have an opinion on one way or the other about what I'm going to talk about. And I'm going to break it down as simple and as honest as I can. Here, here's what I want you to know. I believe we have to make certain that simply because we don't understand something in the Scripture, we don't run from it. That even if we don't understand it, we seek to understand it. Because if God says something is good, I want it. So he ends this talking about two things, and, and one, is, one is simple, and I love to talk about. I love to actually talk about both of these. <laughs> but I'll talk about prophecy and tongues. I want to say this to you, though. Tongues and healing are in the same list. Let me tell you what's really interesting about that. They're good, the Bible says. And if I said, how many of you, well, if I did it this way, I said, everybody who wants to be used by God in the gift of healing, come line up over here on my right. And everybody who wants to be used by God in the gift of tongues, come line up over here on my left. I have a feeling there would be 99.999999% of the church over here. And one dude would walk up over here and everybody would go, that's that weird guy. I've seen him walking around. <laughs> this is what we would do. And yet, God's like, this is good stuff. So first, prophecy. What is prophecy? Well, prophecy is actually used in both Romans chapter 12 and 1 Corinthians 12, which is important that we see that distinction because I believe what it shows us is it can kind of function in two different ways. 
Remember, Romans chapter 12 teaches us these are grace gifts that are literally like, like you have the gift, you function in it. We as a church are called to be what we call a prophetic church. Now, you don't hear me stand up and say we're called to be a prophetic church because we say it in a way that we believe can make sense always to everyone, even if they're brand new to church. We say it this way. It's one of our values. Speak life. What does it mean to be prophetic in the way that Romans chapter 12 calls prophecy? It means to speak life. It is to speak words out of your mouth to build up and encourage others. Every single one of us today has the ability to be prophetic in the way Romans chapter 12 calls us to. Some of us might be more gifted that way, meaning like everything that comes out of your mouth builds others up. Some of us might have to work more at it. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 is when we are making ourselves available to God and it's like Holy Spirit will tell you something to tell someone else that will be always for encouragement and building up, but it will be specific, it will be for a moment, it's right there, you tell them it's over. It's always up to the person who hears, by the way, to take it to God and make sure it's from God. People can come to me and tell me, hey, God told me to tell you this, and I'll receive it, and then I'll go pray and ask God, God, is this actually from you? Because I'm responsible for my relationship with God just like you're responsible for your relationship with God. Somebody else isn't responsible for that. Prophecy is a good thing. Here's how the Apostle Paul distinguished between that and tongues when he began to talk about it, 1 Corinthians 14, it's good that you're enthusiastic and passionate about spiritual gifts, meaning all of these. He's saying, seek them, be passionate, be like, yes, especially prophecy. Why do I, the reason I believe he says especially prophecy is because it's, honestly, it's the most easily understandable. And it always builds others up, especially that. He says, when someone speaks in tongues, no one understands a word he says because he's not speaking to people, but to God. He is speaking intimate mysteries in the spirit, but when someone prophesies, he speaks to encourage people, to build them up, to bring comfort. The one who speaks in tongues advances his own spiritual progress, while the one who prophesies builds up the church. I would be delighted if you all spoke in tongues, but I desire even more that you impart prophetic revelation to others. Greater gain comes to the one who prophesies than the one who speaks in tongues unless there is interpretation so that it builds up the entire church. The Apostle Paul goes on in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 to really break down what we would call sort of order in the church and how, how, how tongues is supposed to operate. And for us, for instance, this is not something we would ever do on a weekend service like you, you see here today because the function of it is supposed to be in a gathering of only those who have declared they are believers of Jesus and understand and are open to this gift of the Spirit in that way. Otherwise, he says, it will create confusion and disorder, and the Bible says God is a God of order. I do want to draw on, though, a different distinction between what we call speaking in tongues or speaking in the Spirit and praying in tongues or praying in the Spirit. And the reason I want to do this today is because when I learned this a long time ago, uh, honestly, it, it probably helped my own prayer life and my relationship with Jesus more than anything else in my life. Romans chapter eight, verse 26 says it like this. Romans chapter eight, verse 26 says it like this. <laughs> you know, I hope you all pray for our production team because they take such good care of us every single weekend. Can we just give them a hand? He says, in a similar way, the Holy Spirit takes hold of us in our human frailty to empower us in our weakness. For example, at times we don't even know how to pray or know the best things to ask for, but the Holy Spirit rises up within us to super intercede on our behalf, pleading to God with emotional sighs too deep for words. I have a feeling that, that, that if not all of you, there's many of you here today that you're like me, where you've been in that moment or that situation where you go, I, I just don't even know what to pray right now. I don't even know what to say. I just don't even, even sometimes good or bad, you're just like, there is just not a word for this right now. Because the Holy Spirit rises up inside of us. Now listen, he doesn't take over your body to where you're no longer in control. Sometimes people think that that's what it means, that there's like, I just, it's an, like an out-of-body experience, but that's not what the scriptures teach. He rises up within us. Remember, we talked about in week one, if you were here, if not, I hope you'll go watch it. We still have to activate him. It's a partnership. It's we walking together. 
Jude chapter 1 verse 20 explains kind of how this works a little bit. It says it this way, but you, my delightfully loved friends, constantly and progressively build yourselves up on the foundation of your most holy faith by praying every moment in the Spirit. Same words translated praying in the Spirit, praying in tongues. How I, we see this happen in my family. Um, I've shared this with you before. I don't know if I've shared it on a weekend, but like, I pray in, in the spirit in my home and, and uh, I'm regularly, but, I, but I'll be like, well, I have five kids, if you didn't know. And often in my house, there's just like scream that breaks out. You don't really even know where it's at. So I just start praying in the spirit because I have no idea what to pray for. And sometimes one of my kids hears me and they're like, dad, what's wrong? <laughs> So I had to make sure and start praying in the spirit more because they only think I do it when something's wrong. <laughs> well, I said, build my faith up. It's in Ephesians chapter six. I believe it's in Ephesians chapter six, verse 18. I think it's 18, but it's for sure Ephesians six. It says, pray in the spirit at all times. What is, it's, this, it's this relationship where, where I'm, I'm tapping into him inside of me. It's a relationship. Here's how Paul described it, 1 Corinthians 14. If I pray in a tongue... My spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. So again, I'm, I'm showing you, the Apostle Paul starts off, so leave that verse there. He starts off in 1 Corinthians 12 talking about the gift of speaking a tongue, that is, with interpretation, that's done in a small gathering of believers who all understand, because otherwise it would create chaos and disorder. Then he goes on to talk about praying in a tongue. He says, what happens if I pray in a tongue? My spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. What am I to do? And this is where this is where I'm saying a lot of us just check out and we go, I don't understand it. So I'm just not gonna worry about it. Can you go back one? Back one. There you go. What am I to do? He says, I will pray with my spirit, but I will pray also, but I will pray with my mind also. He goes, I'll do both. I will sing praise with my spirit, meaning I'll, I'll, I'll sing words I don't necessarily know, maybe just a sound I don't necessarily uh, regularly make, but I'll also sing with my mind. Otherwise, if you give thanks with your spirit, how can anyone in the position of an outsider say amen to the thanksgiving when he does not know what you're saying? So it's always both. There's always this building up of yourself so that you can be helpful to others, and then there's using what you have to help others. It's both. Now, I want to tell you this today. Some of you are like, Pastor, I don't get all this. Last, I was with you, and then the last five minutes, I've kind of been like, now Listen. I get that that's where you might be at. Here's what I want to offer to you. Ask God. My job as your pastor is to help lead you and direct you. Your job is to search God's word, to take to prayer things that I say. I promise you that I would never, ever try to lead you into something that the Bible does not say is good for you. Everything that I would try to lead you to is because the scriptures say it's good for you. Uh, next Monday, July 30th, for those of you that are on the side of going, man, I want, I want more, of, more of Holy Spirit. I want to understand how to function in the gifts of the Spirit more. I, I want a prayer language. I want to understand that a little bit more. Next Monday, July 30th, we, we're doing this extended time of worship on our, on our Mondays in July. Uh, so at the end of that Monday night service, we're going to have some time specifically to pray for people, to believe for people, uh, to agree with faith that we would see God uh, do a work in this way. I'll share for a couple minutes more about it in a little bit more detail. If that's where you're at, be here. At the end of the day with this whole thing, all the gifts, all the aspects of this, know this, the gift is never more important than the person. The gift is never more important than the person. That person in front of you that God is trying to use me and you for to help them, that he is giving us a gift through us to help them, our eyes are to be on them, not on the gift. Because when we begin to think that we have earned something or that we're the special ones, it's like the gift leaves. <laughs> because we've become prideful and because we become self-centered. So how can, how can I be used by God to live alive in this way so powerfully? It's pretty simple. Seek him. 
and know that he, he wants to use us to help others. And the truth is, you know this today, as, as many of you have been used by God to help others, it's awesome. That, that feeling when you're like, God used me today to help somebody. I mean, I still got problems stacked up to right here. <laughs> But it was so awesome how he used me to help that person. So God, I'm just gonna keep seeking you today. Just, say, just use me. I mean, what if? Like, what if this week God used you and you prayed for somebody and they, they got healed and that never happened before in your life, but you just were like, but it did this week. Because you're like, God, I don't, really, I don't necessarily understand it all, but, but, but I believe... Here, If we can believe that Jesus died, spent days in a tomb, and came back to life by the power of the Spirit, if we can believe where the Scripture says, the same Spirit who caused Jesus, who was dead in a tomb, to come back to life, lives inside of you. Can we believe that that spirit would work through us to change things in miraculous ways like we can't even imagine? This is what we're after. Would you close your eyes with me? Lord, I pray right now. I pray. Lord, I pray for an openness to you. I pray right now over every single person who hears my voice for a willingness, for a willingness, Lord, to to not have it all figured out, but a willingness to simply say, God, here I am, use me. A willingness to, to say, Lord, that just because something didn't go the way I wanted it to in the past does not mean it won't in the future. A willingness to say, God, I approach you with an open heart and an open mind. Speak through me. Would you work miracles through me? Lord, we pray right now that you would give every good gift you have for us. I pray we would receive it right now. In fact, just a little different, but, but, but when we receive something, we hold our hands like this, and so I just feel to pray a prayer right now to receive gifts. And so if, if you just would, if in your heart right now, you're just like, I, I, I wanna receive these gifts God has for me. I just invite you to hold your hands like this, just like I am. Lord, I pray for those right now with, with, hands, with hands open. I pray right now in Jesus' name, Lord, for, for the gifts that you have for us, over every man and woman right now, Lord, who is saying, Lord, I wanna receive the gifts you have for me, I just pray you pour them out in Jesus' name. I pray you would overwhelm, Lord, these men and women who are saying, God, if you have it for me, I want it. I pray, Lord, that you would pour it out in their life, head to toe right now in Jesus' name. Lord, that they would, they would feel it in their spirit. Lord, something clicked different for me today. Something changed inside of me today. Something came alive inside of me today. I know I'm not the same because your spirit, Lord, has been activated inside of me like never before. Lord, we thank you for your spirit. And Lord, we declare in Jesus' name, God, everything is for you. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we give God praise one more time?